And this pattern is always the same, with few variations. They pick the most dangerous enemy they can find, and it's themselves. All we need to do is sit back and watch. Good evening, everyone. I apologize. This video has taken me a little while to make. I've seen things in the last 48 hours and had conversations with people in the last 48 hours that I never thought I'd see or really have in reality. I feel like Thursday morning I woke up in a Twilight Zone episode and that feeling has only intensified over the past few days. Fans of this channel will be the first to tell you that I like to bring up the Twilight Zone quite a bit because I feel like we've been living in it for a while and every once in a while something new happens and it's like, oh, yep, Twilight Zone, <laughs> here we are. But today we're going to go to a specific episode of the Twilight Zone. Today we're going to go to Maple Street for an episode called The Monsters Are Due on Maple Street. This was episode 22 of season 1 which originally aired in 1960. It begins with your average, idyllic, suburban American neighborhood with your picket fences on your tree-lined street where people are hanging out on their porches and kids are playing and there's the ice cream truck and people are barbecuing. You know, your average, idyllic, suburban neighborhood. But then all of a sudden... A shadow passes overhead, and there's a flash of light and a loud noise, and everyone sees it, and they all think, oh, it must just be a shooting star. But then the power goes out, and the cars won't start, and the phones don't work, and suddenly everyone's in the street wondering what the hell's going on, and people start throwing out ideas and assuming things. And one kid talks about how he read about alien invasions. And there's the one guy who's trying to tell everyone to calm down, but people started getting all suspicious of each other, and they start throwing out accusations, trying to use things against each other, trying to read into everything. And as it starts to get dark, people start to get more freaked out. One of the people from the neighborhood actually warns everyone that if you just start trying to look for a scapegoat, everyone's going to eat each other alive. So they actually say that. But as the night continues, people start panicking. People start pointing fingers at each other left and right. Everything starts to devolve into chaos. Then all of a sudden the lights start flashing off and on and everyone starts going completely hysterical because they've now been primed and they're completely flipping out. Everyone just, it devolves into a full-on riot. People start throwing bricks through each other's windows and screaming at each other and fighting in the streets. And the whole thing just breaks completely down. Social cohesion, gone. Everyone is just primal at that point. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Thursday morning, I woke up, started my day, started editing. A totally different video that I've actually been working on that's not about this at all. But I noticed that I suddenly had emails in my inbox from every company I have ever, pretty much ever done business with, full stop. CEOs and customer service managers sending me messages about what this company or that company is going to do about the COVID-19. An update on the COVID-19. So even if you're not watching the mainstream media that is continuously harping on this and just talking about it nonstop, all day, all night long. If you avoid that cycle of brainwashing about this, you're still going to get pummeled by it if you check your email or if you go to social media. This is a digital bubble that has been created around this topic. And all of these stories that I've read, a lot of them, they have no substance. They're substanceless. What I mean by that is you have some clickbaity headline about panic fear. A lot of these headlines talk about the anxiety and the fear more than they talk about the thing itself. And then you pretty much have updates that don't tell you anything. And the best advice they got is wash your hands and 
Don't go to places where there's lots of people or something like that. You know, it's the same thing over and over. In a lot of the stories, the fear itself is the is actually more of a focus than 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 the virus, like I said. So I get up to that. By the end of the night, they're talking about the travel ban, which at the time I was like, why why are we banning travel from all these other European nations, but not the UK where Heathrow is, which is one of the most highly trafficked airports in that area and can be gotten to by car by anyone from any of those other banned countries. Like this, the whole thing didn't even make sense to me. You can, there's a channel that goes to France. You can drive to the UK now. I mean, it's an underground tunnel that people can go in and just go over there. So what, if you're not going to close, if you're going to close airports because you're afraid of the spread, but you're not going to close one of the most major ones that all of those other countries have access to, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Although now I've seen today they've they've now banned that one too. So, But we're like, well, we better go to the grocery store first thing in the morning and just get whatever last minute things that we think we might need because the way people are, are reacting, it's not really the virus that's the issue at this point. It's the way people are responding to this situation. So we get to the grocery store first thing Friday morning. It was not even 8 o'clock yet. It wasn't even light outside yet. And we noticed there are no parking spaces. There are basically no carts. Everyone has jam-packed the grocery store. They have bought almost every roll of toilet paper in the store. This is 8 o'clock in the morning at a freaking H-E-B, dude. Everybody has cleaned out the toilet paper as if it's a toilet paper Armageddon over there. Nothing's even happening. This is insane. They've bought all the meat, the bread, the soup, they just panic, panic bought the store. There's no rice, there's no beans, there's, I mean, it's just, it's gone. The carts are just full, and some of these carts were full of crap, just utter crap. Like, they, like okay, so there's going to be this virus, it's going to be really bad, so you're going to buy a year's supply of Pop-Tarts right now? How is that going to help you? How is that going to help your immune system? <laughs> I don't understand the logic that is going on right now because it's not logical. What's happening isn't logical. And people are just the negative energy walking into that store. It, it was so dense and awful. I, I immediately was revolted. I just, I just wanted to turn around and leave. I did not want to go in there at all. That feeling was just such an oily, yucky, sickening feeling. I'm really sensitive to stuff like that. And and we don't talk about that a lot because people want to act like that's not how things work, but it is how things work. We're all walking around in a sea of energy that we can't see because we have a very limited visible spectrum. But you've all gotten gut feelings before. You walk into a room, you just get a bad feeling about something or someone that's happening. Yeah, you're picking up on these signals. There are signals everywhere. We're walking in a sea of them. And when you walk into a building that's filled with people who are just absolutely panic-ridden, anxious people just bathing in their own fear while everyone else is walking around in those people's fear and it's all looping together and bouncing off of everything. I mean, that was just, it wasn't like the time that they freaked everyone out here about a tenth of an inch of ice and then people panic bought the stores. That energy was also anxious, but it wasn't fear the way this was fear. And it just brought out the most negative emotions, the most negative states of people for just on full display. I mean, we were walking down one aisle and some guy had a cool shirt on and Aaron goes, hey, hey man, cool shirt, just to try and say something friendly. And that dude was like, Bleh. his response was actually to be mad that someone gave his shirt a compliment. I guess at a time like this, I don't know. And then we got to another aisle and there was a guy stocking shelves and I was talking to him about, you know, hey, how's it going? Because he looked really freaked out and stressed out. And I just wanted to say, you know, appreciate you doing that and see what was up. And he said the night before, Thursday night, they couldn't even get stuff off of pallets because people were like to get it on the shelves, right? Because people were just picking stuff off. the. They'd roll a pallet out onto the floor and people would start tearing it apart like wolves, like they threw a piece of meat into a pit with hungry wolves and people were just clawing stuff off the pallets. So now that is why now today they have implemented rules at all of these different stores, 
Walmart and HEB is the grocery store we have here in Texas. That's the Texas chain. And I think Kroger and a bunch more, a lot of stores now have implemented limited hours. It's not that we don't have stuff. It's not that we don't have supply. It's that we don't have enough people to put it on the shelves fast enough before people start clawing it all off and trying to buy it all. And the toilet paper thing is just really confusing. I know people in this area now who don't have enough toilet paper because they went to the store just to regularly buy some like they do and because everyone's panic buying all the toilet paper. And here they come. What do you think about this, Nicole? Somebody is going to get hurt. (laughs) And you know, the majority of toilet paper that is the U.S. supply of toilet paper, that's manufactured in the U.S. We don't have a lack of toilet paper. What we have is a lack of an ability for people to get it on a shelf fast enough before someone comes along and buys it all because people are mass buying it. They're, they're stacking up on it like year supplies at a time now. So now here in the HEBs in this state, they have implemented rationing of items. Like you can only buy two of everything now, not just water, which they've also said you can only buy two waters. You can only buy two toilet papers. You can only buy two hand soap. I mean, there's a whole list of things. You're only allowed two pasta, I saw. You can only buy two things of pasta. It, it, there's a whole list of things that you're only allowed to have two of now at the store. And while I'm talking to this stalker who's telling me about how awful it was to work while people were doing that, because it sounds like the worst Black Friday you've ever been to, which is already really bad, because that's, that's, that's not even really for that good of a reason when people start acting like that on Black Friday. At least this is a little bit better of a re. I mean, although I will say, uh, there's, there's not even a single case in the county that I live in. Not even a single confirmed case here. So... This is the response people are having, and there's not even a single confirmed case where I live. This woman comes around the corner, and I guess I was in her way, and she basically snarled at me. Excuse me, please. Like, really? Like a cat. Like when a cat hisses at you, you know, it was basically this lady. Because she's in such a damn hurry. Because she's got to get, you know, whatever I was standing in her way from getting, and she's got to get it right now. It was hateful. It was unnecessary. Of course I would have moved out of her way. Oh, I'm sorry. I came here right now to stand in your way. That was the whole reason I came to the store this morning was to stand in your way. Obviously, that's totally what I was up to. I mean, that's the way she acted. (laughs) It was just ridiculous. It was not based in logic or rational thinking. But that kind of attitude was just the whole place was like that. It made my skin crawl. Then I get up to the checkout line, which is, by the way, backed all the way down the whole freaking thing. I mean, at this point, I'm thinking to myself, if I didn't have two kids, I would have just left. I and Because I knew this was going to be bad. <laughs> After the announcements on Thursday and all the emails, I was like, okay, we should probably just go get a few more things because I don't want to have to come back to one of these stores again for at least a few weeks. I don't want to have to even try it. But if I hadn't had two kids, I would have just been like, whatever, (laughs) I'm fasting. (laughs) Like, I don't even need anything because it's not worth it. It's not. So I go up and I get in this crazy long line and there's a man in front of me who just keeps running back into the freezer section and grabbing stuff and chucking it back into his cart. Frozen pizzas and whatever. I don't know. But he was sprinting like he was a, a contestant. In the game show Supermarket Sweep, I don't know if you guys remember that game show they used to have where you run around the grocery store, try to throw all this stuff in your cart. That's what it was like. He was in full panic mode. One more thing, one more thing, one more thing. And he just kept running, 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 and then throwing things in. And everyone else's carts were just piled high with stuff. Just so much that it was almost falling out the sides of the carts, you know. And uh, just that feeling of just everyone freaking out, being so angry and fear, panicky, just all 
circling back in on itself. It was just really nasty. It was just a nasty thing. So then we leave and what do you think about all that? That was insane in there. This is crazy. This is about 8 a.m. We waited in line. It was only 10 minutes. The line wasn't so bad, but this parking lot is packed. This is what it looks like at peak hours when people get off at work. This is 8 a.m. I haven't been to the store this early very often, but what I am, there's hardly anybody there's there. There's hardly anybody here usually. Yeah. This is nuts, man. At this point, I'm starting to document things because I figure I'm going to probably need to talk about some of this stuff. And we decided to drive over to the Costco just to see what's going on over there. Not only is it the same thing, but they have police stationed at the front door of the Costco. And I didn't find this out until later, but the reason is because people have been beating each other up in these big box stores over, I guess, toilet paper. I don't know. Fights have been breaking out at Costco's and Sam's Clubs and who knows where else over buying things. I have a good friend who lives in Washington and I'm sure a lot of you have heard what's going on up there. And she said she was at a Costco and a woman who was wearing a lot of perfume walked in front of her and she's sensitive to that and it made her feel like she needed to sneeze. So she sneezed into her sleeve. She said everybody stopped what they were doing and turned around to glare at her. One lady's mouth dropped open and she dropped the thing of beans that she was holding in it. And everyone was just staring at her as if she had the plague. And she said for the first time, she actually had to think about whether or not she was about to get mob violence perpetrated against her because she sneezed in public. And I don't even think sneezing was on the list of official symptoms. So, and she could see in that moment how easy it would be to have mob violence because they're walking around in this sea of just the most negative human emotions just swirling around and bouncing off of each other. I guess they probably don't even realize they're doing that, but they're just picking up on it like a receiver and just feeling all that stuff subconsciously. And when you're already freaking out and then you walk into that, it's like a trigger is now going off in people and they're losing it. And again, this is in a county where there has not even been a single case. Then I go home and it's like every banking institution, every hotel I've ever stayed at. On Friday, it was every grocery store I've ever shopped at that had my email for any reason at all. I'm getting, and I'm like, oh, this seems very coordinated almost. How it's every single grocery store, really? I got that one email that I pretty much, it's like super old from 20 years ago and I just use it for whatever crap because it doesn't even matter to me and uh every it's just COVID 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 on loop don't they say repetition is the simplest form of brainwashing well that's what's going on and then today we decided well we're probably not going to want to go to Austin for a while so maybe if we have any errands we need to run like these library books that are due back and stuff like that. We better go take care of whatever because I'm not going to want to go there either. So we decided to go to Austin today. And anyone who's been to Austin or used to live here, you're going to know what I mean when I say this. I-35 was almost traffic free. This I-35 in Austin on a Saturday at 5 o'clock. It's never like this. It's usually backed up. You're never allowed to go to the speed limit because there's usually so many people. But this is just very light traffic. I've never, I've lived here eight years now, I think. I've never seen it like this. I mean, there's still people, it's just not that many. At five o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday, and not any Saturday, but the first Saturday before spring break week officially begins. So what does that tell you? I was able to drive the entire expanse of Austin on I-35 in a half an hour. That is unheard of. Normally, it's bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic that's stop and go. You'll be lucky if, your car, if you can get your car to go 40 miles an hour on I-35 on a Saturday, pretty much most of the day until after dinner. The roads were largely deserted. There were, there were cars on the highway, but it wasn't very many. 
we were able to do the speed limit for once on I-35. This is just unheard of. And they changed, they have those little signs, those little electronic signs over the roadways at various intersections that say things like, don't text and drive, y'all, and, you know, don't do, don't drink and drive, it's bad, and stuff like that, you know, but they changed them all. Now they say, wash your hands, and if you're sick, stay home. And there was just something so eerie about an almost deserted street with this sign just flashing these two messages over and over on loop under cloudy skies, because we've had cloudy skies now. It's not even really clouds. It's just murky, white-out skies for days. And there was just something so eerie about the whole scene. Anyways, I have other things that I, I feel... There are other things that need to probably be said on this topic, but the first and foremost thing that I just feel like I need to say is all I hear from from anyone is wash your hand. All they're telling people to do is wash your hands and limit potential contact. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. But you know what? There's something else that everyone needs to do too. Because the things that happen in your body, all the things that happen in your body start on a psychic level. And I think it's kind of ironic that this is a coronavirus because what's a corona? What's the corona normally? It's the aura right, around the sun that you can only really see during a total solar eclipse. Fear is the mind killer. Remember that scene in Dune? She's got his hand in the box and she's telling him all this stuff that's happening to his hand and he's telling himself, fear is the mind killer. Don't give in to the fear. Your immune system is taxed by constant stress and constant anxiety and constant panic and fear and freaking out. So you can wash your hands all day, but if you're freaking out, if your anxiety is driven up to a level 100 because everywhere you look in this digital bubble, all you're hearing is COVID-19 and corona on a loop to where it almost doesn't even sound like words anymore because you've heard it so much, and you've just jacked up your entire system to where you're just dumping stress hormones and chemicals into your body at a pretty steady pace, well... Your immune system is going to be impaired by that continuous panic and stress. Continuously stressing someone out is a great way to drive their immune system to a point where if there is a virus, if there is a flu, if there is a cold, if there is something, it's going to be a lot easier to catch it, right? This is some of you that went to college and you remember finals week, you get all stressed out in the lead up to finals week. And as soon as you take that test, everyone gets sick. It used to happen to me every semester because I'd get all stressed out trying to cram for all my finals and everything, and then I would end up getting sick that week because my body couldn't handle the continued repeated stress of freaking out and and staying at this constant state of low-level to mid-level anxiety to now what's just full-on high-level anxiety that people are having. So fear, that's the mind killer. And our realities are based on the signals that are sent to our brains from our sense organs to build the perceptions that we have of our reality. So if we're just constantly listening to all this fear about what's going to happen, not what's happened yet, not what is actually happening physically where you are. I'm talking about the projections and all the constant repeating, repeating, and repeating. It's just, it's like just pushing a button, a panic button in someone's forehead just over and over and over right there in their corona, right? That's not going to help you. You know, buying a cart full of Pop-Tarts and frozen pizza and freaking out is not going to help you. It's not a helpful thing for you to do to yourself or to anyone else either. This isn't helping, you know? And it doesn't even matter at this point what's literally going on in the physical world with which some of these people exist in. Because their reality has already been shaped and molded and given to them by this inundation, this digital bubble of information overload that is just basically constantly hitting that panic button. And it's going to tax the immune system. And you know what? You can wash your hands all day and buy every Clorox wipe that ever existed on the planet. But if your immune system is taxed, see what I'm saying? And not only does your mind create your perceptive reality, but our minds are so powerful that 
there have been cases where a woman has believed she is pregnant and she has had every symptom of pregnancy. I saw one time there was a story about a woman who grew an amniotic sac. That's how strong the mind is. They call it pseudosiasis. Is that how you pronounce that? And it says that doctors suspect the psychological factors actually trick the body into thinking that it's pregnant. You, you can trick your own body into thinking you're pregnant. That is how powerful the mind is. People have thought themselves out of having cancer before. They have, they have cured themselves through the power of positive thinking. I mean, the brain is insanely powerful. This is why, this is why we have such a thing as placebo effect where you take something and you think it's doing something, and so it does something because you think it does. So what goes on in your mind is very important. I've even watched, and you know what? I am not going to play these clips. I've, I, a lot of times when I do these videos, I'll make montages of clips to prove my point. I don't think I need to do that right now. I, I definitely don't want to make you witness just 27 people saying the word fear, but that's what it is. Even when the stock market... Thing happened just the other day. The lady was like, fear drove the markets today. Then I watched a mayor of one of our larger cities give a press conference, and the whole press conference was about freaking people out. It was not about calming anyone down the way he was talking. I couldn't believe it, because normally when they give these press conferences, they usually try to get everyone to remain calm. But it's almost like the words he, he was saying were trigger words that were trying to trigger people into freaking out more. So I'm not going to play any of these clips. I refuse. I don't really think that you guys need to be subjected to it, you know. But it was kind of, it, it, again, just like everything else, it's unreal. <laughs> that there, This is the way that this is being handled. It's as if they want people to freak out. <laughs> That's what I mean. And driving people to the point where they're just responding emotionally and reacting to a situation instead of thinking about things logically, is also driving people to a point of begging to have their rights taken away and begging for any level of just fascism that you can think of. And some of that is actually going on. That's actually occurring now. People that back in 2012 were decrying the idea of martial law in the streets are actually saying today it's going to be a good thing when that happens. It's going to be good. When we are locked down. Unbelievable. Again, it's unreal. You know, it reminds me of a quote I saw today that was shared by the odd man out. He's a guy that I've been on the boiler room with. And he shared this great quote on his Instagram. It said, let's face it. We live in a command-based system where we've been programmed since our earliest school years to become followers, not individuals. We have been conditioned to embrace teams, the herd, the masses, popular opinion, and to reject what is different, eccentric, or stands alone. We are so programmed that all it takes for any business or authority to condition our minds to follow or buy something is to simply repeat a statement more than three or four times until we repeat it ourselves and follow it as truth or the best, trendiest thing. This is called programming the frequent repetition of words to condition us how to think, what to like or dislike, and who to follow. And how to act is another one that I would add. And that was by Susie Kasem. It's a great quote, kind of sums it all up. Because that's what's going on now. They have put people in a fear bubble. They've been ramping it up every single day for months now. And it, the whole thing is just crescendoed over the last several days, and everyone is just panic buying the stores into the ground to the point where they've now had to limit hours just so they can put things on the shelf. Not because we don't have resources. The resources are there to be had. Like I said, not even a single case here, and this is how people are acting. So I don't even know, just from this response, just from witnessing this response, when when in many of these places, nothing is even actually happening, and this is how people have, have reacted, I can't imagine what it would be like if stuff actually was happening. It is great to be prepared. I am not suggesting for a moment that being prepared is a bad idea. People should be prepared. But 
this isn't prepared. Waiting until everyone mass freaks out and then just panic buy everything off the shelf so no one can have any toilet paper, that is not really being prepared. <laughs> that's not preparedness. You know, that that is that is panic buying. And that's what they're calling it because they have whipped everyone up into a level 11, which takes me back to the Twilight Zone and Maple Street. Do you know how the episode ends? I'm going to spoil it for you now. You should go watch it anyway. It's a good episode. It's one of, I think it was ranked one of the top 10 Twilight Zone episodes of all time because it makes a really good point. But I am, though, there is going to be some spoilers now, though. So at the end, you have neighbors who just moments before in the episode were totally friendly with each other and hanging out in the street. Now they're beating each other to death in the streets and they're throwing rocks through each other's windows and everything has gone to complete hell. Utter chaos, everything is devolved, and the scene cuts to a nearby hilltop that overlooks the street. There's these two guys there. They're talking about how all you have to do is use this device they have to manipulate a neighborhood's power. And how simply messing with it just makes everyone go insane and that it only takes a few hours after screwing with people's machines... The machines are specifically mentioned, by the way. That's all it takes for people to descend into complete and utter anxiety, paranoia, chaos, panic, and flip out on each other. And it's a pattern that they've done in other cities, and it can be exploited. Sit back and watch the pattern. And this pattern is always the same, with few variations. They pick the most dangerous enemy they can find, and it's themselves to take over the planet because these two guys and their device, they're aliens and they're going to take over Earth. And the last line is about how they're going to do it one neighborhood at a time. All we need to do is sit back and watch. Their world is full of maple streets. And we'll go from one to the other and let them destroy themselves. One to the other. One to the other. One to the other. And the closing narration... Because you know how they always do that really great Rod Serling closing narration. The closing narration says, The The tools tools of conquest conquest do not necessarily come with bombs and explosions and fallout. There are weapons that are simply thoughts, attitudes, prejudices, to be found only in the minds of men. And the pity of it is that these things cannot cannot be confined confined to the the twilight twilight zone. zone. There's more to say on this topic. There's a lot more that needs to be said but for now I just want to say fear is the mind killer people need to start protecting that protect your mind (laughs) calm down and realize that you are hurting your immune system by freaking out is not helping you to do that it's not going to help you in the future to make decisions that may need to be made with whatever this is that we're actually facing here in this situation You aren't going to be able to handle it if you are taxing your entire body by stressing and freaking out. Mm. I love you guys. I really do. And I certainly wish I could come on here and say something else. But for now, I feel like that's what I really needed to say at this time. And... So I'm going to I'm going to stop this for now, but I'll talk to you guys soon.